What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Premier League career mode. It is episode number four and we are back. Yes, we are back with another episode. Guys, I just want to say I'm so sorry for no episodes over the past few days. Uh, if you can't tell by my voice, I've been incredibly, incredibly sick, which is really annoying because we were just getting on a run after back-to-back -back wins and only one loss in our last six games and then stopped in our tracks. But uh, yeah, we're back today, guys. And I just want to say thank you so much for the comments, the messages, the Instagram DMs I've been getting whilst I've been sick. Really, really appreciate your support, man, honestly. But so sorry I've been away. Um, normally, as you know, like I had COVID last year, I just powered through. This time it was not an option. My mouth was so full of ulcers. The pain was ridiculous. I couldn't swallow solids for days. Uh, but you know what? We're back. And um, yeah, hopefully I don't sound too bad. But uh, hopefully from now on, most importantly, we are back to uh, daily upload. So yeah, apologies, apologies, apologies for being away. But uh, yeah, we are back and uh, hoping to continue to good form at Craven Cottage. And as we continue to scouting to start today's comeback episode off, uh, that Bryn Pierce guy at the top looks really good. But, you know, the potential to me is always the most important thing. But the overall, like when you get to a certain level, that's still got to be good enough. Though I must say this guy is going to have a good overall to begin with. So we'll gamble on the fact the potential may not be as high. But uh, as from Scotland, oh, Ben Morrison, 60 to 70 overall. Didn't we just have an amazing Scottish fullback in our uh, <laughs> in our realistic career mode with uh, with former from Liverpool, Ben McKenzie, the uh, the only youth player that saved ended up being uh, quite quite noteworthy. But uh, yeah, like I said, you you can afford to be really selective. For me, like youth scouting, I wouldn't necessarily say it's easy per se. Uh, but you, you can afford to be very selective because you know you're going to find some absolute superstars during a nine-month mission. So even if you miss out on one or two, you're going to find three or four that are just as good, if not better. So right now in the academy, looking like this, five players in the youth squad right now. And I must say, that lad McKenzie, oh, sorry, Morrison, sorry. Ben Morrison, the new Ben McKenzie. He looks, <laughs> he doesn't look like him aesthetically, but he does in terms of position and potential as well. That is absolutely bizarre, man. Talk about deja vu. But uh, yeah, you see this guy here converting to AM. We, we we said this before. Once you once you find a low a player of a low overall, but the attributes are really good, the, the chances are they're just playing in the wrong position. Do a position conversion, and you'll see a massive overall spike when they're done. Right here we go. First game, comeback game, and like I always say, life is about perspective, man. Yes, just one win in four, but only one loss in six, and I'm choosing to be positive, and that's how I'm looking at it. Decent little mini run from Fulham. Let's keep it going here away in Anfield against Liverpool. Come on, Fulham. Yeah, these past few days have, uh, have not been it, man. They have not been it, I'm going to be honest. Now, normally, I, I power through with a few paracetamol when I'm um, when I'm under the weather, but this was something different, man. Like, I, I genuinely felt like I'd been knocked for six. It, it actually kind of reminded me of when I had my glandular fever a few years ago. Like, I was just absolutely out of it. And my mouth, I mean, oh my goodness, the amount of ulcers I had in there was unbelievable. Seriously, I got through like two chews of one gel on a weekend. <laughs> it was just awful, man. It was agonizing. Couldn't swallow solids. It was on a, a liquid diet. And it was just awful. Absolutely awful. Um, and I, I'm, I'm so glad that now they're starting to subside. I've, I've still got the ulcers, but it's nowhere near as painful. I'm able to persist with it. And um, yeah, hopefully from, from here on out, touch wood, fingers crossed. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm over the hump, I think that's the best way of putting it here. As the down tray where he's fed through to make it 1-0. Great save by Allison. And turn me eye for a corner. Come on, Fulham. Pick up where we left off here. Massive win in Anfield. That'll do us the world of good here. As he's headed away by Van Dyke. And tossing out a Rabio. Finds Jimenez, but I think this chance is now going to come towards... A conclusion. No, it won't. Traore skips past Granate and fires wide. Can't miss two golden chances like that at Anfield and expect to win, man. Oh, no, no, no. Salah turns his man. Oh, glorious. And Mo Salah, he only needs a little... Excuse me. He only needs a little bit of space to find a pocket to run into and then bend it into the far corner. What a wonderful little goal there. And I often say, this is this is the difficulty of AI and Ultimate, man. Like, you just... They only need this tiny bit of room and they'll get past you. And once that shot comes in on target, most of them are going to hit the back of the net. Salah with the opener, and Liverpool have the lead. Obviously, the January window should open in today's episode. It's, oh, it's headed away. Um, I've decided I'm not going to... Uh, oh, Bobby Reed, Jimenez, oh, what a lucky goal. What a lucky goal. I've decided I'm not going to extend the contract to Tossian Adder or Bayo. Obviously, as we know, there's, there's a pretty much, I'd say, 90% guarantee... 
he's going to end up moving on the free trouts for a real life to either Newcastle United or Manchester United. Those are two that will be most linked. So with that being the case, I'm not going to extend the contract to tossing out a bio and uh, I will let him go on a free for the realism. But Raul Jimenez would love it. It's an incredibly lucky goal. But back on level terms, nothing deservedly so as well. We've not, we've not really been under the cosh or under the cop, if you will. Uh, does that work? Not really. All game long. So I think we deserve that leveller. And now can we claim a point? Last chance for Liverpool. Forced forward. But Calvin Bassey heads it away. We'll take that. We'll take that. I'll take that every day of the week. That's five points taken from a possible nine. And that's inconsistent form. But that's good enough for mid-table in the Premier League. And, and again, only one loss now in our last seven. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, it's one of my favourite sayings. I think we actually talked about this in the last episode. But know where you are. You know, like know where you are. And, you know, right now, we are we are not a team that can... Okay, Bobby. We are not a team that can go to Anfield and expect to win. Not yet. You know, I always say, in an RTG, eventually you'll get there, but not yet. And right now, 11th place, I would have bitten your hand off. Well, not bitten your hand off, but I would have said thank you very much and shook your hand had you offered that to me at the start of the season. Right, following game, uh, not in the forest at home, but right now only 10 points on the board for Nuno's side. This is a really important game. If we can win this one and make it only one loss in eight and pull well clear of the bottom three, that'll be a massive, massive boost as we approach the halfway stage this season. Come on, Fulham. Has anyone seen the uh, the, the viral uh, kind of TikTok remix of this this girl who's like trying to date and she goes saying like uh, I'm looking for a man with a trust fund who works in the finance. He's six five and has blue eyes. Never remixed it to like a G six. It's like it's living rent free in my head right now. The 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 mix is just. Finance, trust fund, 6-5, blue eyes. I don't know why, but she reminds me of my commentary, and I'm like, Bassi, Reem, Tossin, Robinson, you know? <laughs> so when he fires in and Taiwo makes it 1-0. Forrest in front, and once again, got to come from behind to claim a point. Oh, Langer gets away, down the right, Calvin Bassi on an island. Oh, brilliantly done. Great save by Leno. And we kept him play by Harry Toffolo, but what a save that is by Leonard to keep us still in this man. Of all the games for this unbeaten run to come to an end, this was not the one I was hoping. I mean, not hoping for it anyway, but still not the one I was expecting, I guess. I will be. Get to that wide to Robinson. Still time. But, oh, just, I, you know what? I always say this when I've not played well. Hold my hands, I'll accept it. I've been poor today. Really poor. I had to make a few changes due to fitness, but even so, just not been on it at all. Yep, simply put, just not on it in that game. Was not on it at all. And the worst thing is that Traore, whilst he stayed out there, did go down towards the end of the game. So just before we dive into our next one, I want to see whether that is a, uh, a more serious injury than just a bruise. It's one of those moments where I'm like, I feel confident, do you know what I mean? Because of the animation, I feel quite confident it's just a bruise. He soldiered on, he seemed all right. With career mode, you never know. And it's a dead leg quite all right. But do you know what? I, I, I like this. You know, to start the season off, we're, 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 we're getting quite realistic injuries. And I often say, this is, this is really, really important to make the game feel better. We had an injury to Willian at the start of the season. We've had knocks now to, uh, to, to Traore and to Sheaf as well. This is, this is how it should be. Oh, and Polina as well. Oh, and we've just had a draw for the FA Cup third round. I don't think we'll be getting past that. Liverpool away at Anfield. Might have just claimed a point there in the league, but I don't think they'll make the same mistake in the Cup. Right, uh, following game, West Ham aiming to bounce back here after no wins in our last two. And to be fair, I say life's all about perspective, but now only one win. And I think, what now, our last seven games? So, yeah, really, really important. We try and get back to winning ways here. David Moyes' side, though, only for this season as we know. Lopetti Gay has already taken over for next season. But West Ham here at home in the London derby. Come on, Fulham. I see a lot of people asking what David Moyes' legacy is going to be at West Ham. And to me, uh, you know, granted, I'm a little bit biased as Bobby Reid fires in his fifth of the year and opens to score. And as I'm a bit of a David Moyes fanboy, I admit that. But I think it should be looked upon favourably because you're going to really because he's had two stints at West Ham. Two stints. He was drafted in initially. Um, to steady the ship when they were really struggling. And he did that. And they let him go. And then they brought him back again. And in his second stint, obviously a lot more successful, a little bit more long-term. You know, successive seasons in Europe, guiding them to European silverware and success by winning the Conference League a couple of years ago. You know, and dealing with Declan Rice, one of the best players in the league, leaving to a London rival and rebuilding the side with some absolutely class players too, including Mohamed Kudus. 
I, 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 I think he's done a pretty solid job, in my opinion. And I hope that the West Ham fans will think favourably of him uh, as the years go on as well. He's not been a miracle worker, don't get me wrong. Unfortunately, he never got into the Champions League, or unfortunately for West Ham fans. But I, I think he did a solid job. A 7 to a 7.5 out of 10, I would say. Possibly 8 if you're being kind, like I would be. <laughs> A lovely ball through there, David. Oh, oh no, Leno would have saved, and then the rebound turned in by Cornet as West Ham had that leveler. Man, oh man, I have to say, right now I'm really struggling defensively, honestly. Really, really weak. Well, you know, I like to be all philosophical and see the positive in things. Yeah, okay, so we're not losing a lot of games right now, but we're also not winning a lot either. No wins in our last three now, only two points taken from nine. Yes, granted, a draw isn't a terrible result at home to West Ham, but at some point, we need to turn these draws to wins if we are going to challenge for a top 10 place. And it's not going to get any easier either. Next up, Newcastle United away in the northeast of England, missing out on Europe for next season. But to be fair, tough season for them, especially with all the injuries. I'm sure they'll bounce back for the following year. Magpies and James is next up. Also, I'm not sure if anyone is aware of this, but uh, I know that fans of both clubs would have been. But... Three days after the Premier League season finished, on Wednesday, Newcastle United played Spurs in a post-season friendly in Australia. Bizarre. I think it's the first time I've, I've ever seen that uh, between two Premier League sides. Now, we know all about the pre-season friendlies and sometimes going to, again, in Australia or America or whatever for, for a couple of pre-season games. But, uh, yeah, on Wednesday... Newcastle United faced Spurs in a post-season friendly. For those curious, Newcastle won on penalties. Um, but utter, utterly bizarre. For all the talk this year about fixture congestion, the workload, uh, the strain on players, and both, both teams and both managers talked about the various injuries they had during the season. A post-season friendly, three days after the league campaign finished in Australia. And both teams, I checked the lineups, had strong teams out there. I have to say, utterly bizarre. Utterly, utterly bizarre, but perhaps this is now the new norm. Post-season friendlies. Crazy. Calvin can't get it away. Anthony Gordon. Leno stuck in a chance in the end. Don't think it would matter that I brought him out or not. The ex-Evertonian fires it past him and Newcastle have the... Okay, now this is this is starting to get worrying. You know, we have like three draws in a row. Eh, it's all right. We're a mid-table side. Not going to get too concerned about that, but no wins in four now this will be. And two points taken for a possible 12. That's not mid-table form, that's, that's relegation form. Okay, all right. Got, got to pick this up before it gets a little too concerning for me. As we often say, you know, form so OP, which means that you've, ah, you, you've, you've got to put a stop to it. You know, when it's a poor run of form, you've got to put a stop to it as soon as you can. A great tackle there by Ben Sheaf and Traore jinx into Guimaraes. And Newcastle get it back. Longstaff ball cut out. Bassi can't clear. Gordon shot blocked by Sheaf and still we're down. And another injury as well. Is that Calvin Bassi now hitting the That's our second injury in the game. First to Robinson, now to Calvin. They were both asking for subs. But I'm going to say, just see the game out. We've got a week's rest to the Burnley game. Just see the game out. Hold on. Ah, oh, Botman is there. And Newcastle will get it clear. Yeah, this is this is worrying now. This is worrying. No no wins in four, two points second from twelve. That is not going to cut it, man. And if we don't beat Burnley next week, then we're definitely in trouble. I I I, I can handle a mini poor poor, poor run of form, but it's gotta be stopped sooner rather than later. And as for the injuries for Calvin and oh Anthony Robinson, well, Calvin's just a bruise, so we'll be back for the Burnley game. That's really important because we're really light at CB. But as for Anthony Robinson, broken toe, classic career broken toe. But you know, I, I say this all the time, man. I say this all the time. It's it's a good thing. It, it really is a good thing because it adds to the challenge. It adds to the realism. It adds to the immersion as well. And Anthony down on for three months. So with Balotelli Torre most likely going to get recalled by Milan uh, in January, we'll probably need to look at bringing in a new left back in that window to plug the gap whilst he's out. Yes, we can move Castagne or Kenny Tate to that side. I think Harrison Reed could probably do a decent job there at left back as well. But yeah, we're going to need someone to replace Anthony whilst he's uh, whilst he's going to be down. But again, it, again, it adds to the challenge. You know, it's it's the best way I can recommend you guys improve the fun of your career mode saves. I know it sounds regressive. I know it sounds you know counter counter to that. But genuinely, it's true. If you 
if you add injuries to the game and get them more frequently, it does make it a lot more fun, believe me. And just before that Burnley game as well, we get the email here. We discussed this briefly earlier about Tosin Adarabaya, but also Willian Rodak and Kenny Tate can leave on free transfers. Um, to be honest, dear, I, I'm fine letting Willian go. He's now down three ratings and a 35 years old. I, I always loved Willian at Chelsea, but I'm totally fine letting him go. Uh, Marek, Rodak and Kenny I'd like to keep. But again, for Tossi and I let go. I'm not sure about Kenny. I think he'll also leave on a free transfer. But Marek Rodak, I like him as a stand-in for Bern Leno. So I'm going to extend his contract. He's definitely going to stay. But as for, for Tossi and for the realism, we'll let him go on a free come the summer. And as for Kenny, I'm not too sure. I think, I think we'll see what happens in January. If a bigger club comes in and offers him a contract, then I'll probably let him go. Ah, and actually on Kenny Tate, just real briefly, uh, I've seen that Fulham have triggered a one-year extension uh, I did this last week, so now it expires in June 2025. Okay then, so Kenny, sorry bro, but you're staying with me. <laughs> he might have wanted to test his, uh, his, his uh, test the waters in free agency, but no, in that case, if, if Fulham are keeping you for an extra one year, uh, we'll, we'll do two. We'll, 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 we'll do two. We'll, we'll just see, because he's been the first team starter here. Um, we'll, we'll see if he'll have an extra year and it seems though he's okay with that so yeah we'll, we'll keep him on the same salary he'll be on in real life as well and uh, a two year extension for, uh, for Tay Tay uh, in this save uh, one year more than the one he's just been triggered in real life I'm pleased with that though because I did not want to see this guy on a free, go on a free transfer and now let's see if we can mark those contract extensions with a much needed win none in our last four but if we can't win this game we are in trouble bottom place Burnley only one win all season long at Craven Cottage. Surely got to return to winning ways here. Let's get it done. Come on, Fulham. Yeah, annoyingly, in, uh, in the January window, whilst I will look to make a signing, or possibly two, um, the player that I was quite keen on to fill in whilst Robinson is injured has just moved on to Sevilla. So, yeah, that's uh, Dennis Shirkin. Uh, ex, ex Spurs and Sunderland man. has been chief shot. is blocked and he'll go up in the air. But right now, well, maybe I should tone the injury sliders down a little bit. Another one happening seven minutes in here. Alex Iwobi now hitting the deck. And that is surely going to be longer than just a bruise. Getting back to his feet. But I think that's a very probable broken toe. That's a nice point in the middle. Oh, what a goal. What a goal. A nice point in the middle. And Zeki Amduni makes the most of it with the bicycle kick past Leno. For a, for a second, I thought, should Leno get beaten? There was not much power on that, but the accuracy right into the bottom corner and behind from a direct free kick whipped into the middle. So nice bit of technique. Maybe again, Leno should do a little bit better. I often, I often say this, like when you watch a goal going on the replay, it, it always seems to look worse for the keeper when it's not in real time. Do you know what I mean? But even so, I'll tell you what, if we lose this game, we, we are in trouble. We definitely are in trouble, man. This is bottom place Burnley at home. If we can't win this... And if we lose this, then yeah, we're definitely in trouble. Let's go, Ben, through the gap. Jimenez, Bobby. Oh, wait, keep going, keep going, keep going. I see you, Trey. Oh, you know when I'm like... Oh, not talking. It's because I'm concentrating so hard on the build-up. I need to capitalise on it. Great stop by Muric, ensuring I don't. Still 1-0. Lovely football. Just couldn't apply the finishing touch. And that is going to do it for the half. Oh, it's Ben Sheaf always scored a screamer. Still down by one. And if we do lose this, yeah, no doubt about it, we're in trouble. We'll need some investment in January. Otherwise, we will get dragged into our relegation scrap before we know it. Don't get me wrong, this isn't even technically our rebuild year. We haven't even got to the rebuild part of the RTG yet because in the first season, all we've done so far is bring in two, you know, below average players. Let's be honest, in Ben Sheaf and, and Trey Hume. And, you know, we, I mean, it's more like the blueprint year, you know. We're just trying to find out what we want to build here with Fulham. This, this isn't the rebuild. This is the pre-build, you know. <laughs> We're not even rebuilding yet. It's next year where the real work begins. Bobby. Oh, straight at Muric. Man, oh man. But the one thing we can't afford to do is get put into a relegation scrap because then I'm going to start panicking. I'm going to Calvin win it, mate. And Kenny to Traore. Finds the space. Finds Rao. Oh, what a miss. Oh, my goodness gracious me. Weaker left foot granted, but oh, my word. 
This is when you start to worry. When you miss a hatful of chances against bottom place team at home. Oh my word. How on earth are we going to lose this, honestly? Well, well, well. Um, we're, we're in trouble. We're, we, are, we are in trouble. I, I, I love to be philosophical. I love to try and see the positive in everything. But there is nothing positive about losing 1-0 at home to bottom place team. Okay, we're, we're in trouble. Ja the Jaroni window can't open fast enough, man, because we've got to reinvest, man. This, this It might be the pre-build year. We've got to start building something, because right now we are just getting exposed. And as for the injury for Iwobi, oh, my word. Oh, my word. Okay, do you know what? I, I, I might actually reduce the injury sliders only, only slightly, only slightly. Um, I'll put it on the screen now so you see what they go down to. It'll only be a couple of notches. But okay, right now, now, now we're in trouble. Now, now we're in trouble. Iwobi's down, Robinson's down. That's our that's our left side pairing, both down with three month injuries. Alex hasn't exactly set the world alight in his uh, in his year with us here. Only the one assist in eighteen games and no goals. But it's it's just about having healthy bodies that are Premier League quality, and that's another one going down. Yeah, this is uh, this is not looking good. Well, let's get to the January window as soon as we can. Then, following game, and after this will be the official halfway stage of the season. Boxing Day, another side in the bottom three. Bournemouth in 18th place away at the Vitality. And if we lose this game, three straight losses, four losses in five, and no wins in six. Yeah, losing this game is not an option. Got to bounce back here on Boxing Day on the south coast of Bournemouth. Come on, fun. This, this is a massive game here. Starting to uh, compile a list of a few players I'd like to bring in in January, if possible. Um, again, our budget is around 35 mil. I don't want to spend all of that, obviously. But, yeah, we just, we just need some healthy bodies that have got enough quality to play, really. Right now, we're, uh, we're down to the bare bones a little bit, but I guess we kind of are. Balo Torres starting his first Premier League game. Possibly his only Premier League game, so he's definitely getting recalled by Milan. And as Semenyo fires it in, yeah, we're in trouble. We are in trouble. Back-to-back -back losses to relegation sides, or sides in the relegation zone. I mean, there's, there's not a word for that than trouble brewing, you know? <laughs> One nil down, yeah, we're in trouble. We, we are in trouble here. I mean, simply put, it just isn't a very good team. Like, let's just be honest, this is just not a very good team. It's, it's all right, but um, it's not quite what you'd call top 10 standard at least in my opinion but there are a couple of decent players here including this man who fires in the level up man do we need that honestly trail the equalizer come on, we've got to win this game man the draw is okay but we we really really need three points here and the win will be massive come on come on two to go for the break sinisteria dispossessed we'll have that we'll have that and that should do it for the half in less. Oh, what a ball. Wilson. Willian. 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 Oh, finish. What a finish, mate. Willian. Look at that Chelsea Willian out there. Maybe not Arsenal Willian, but Chelsea Willian. What a finish that was. The Brazilian back from his spell with Corinthians. And it's a wonderful strike by the Brazilian to put us in front for the first time. Gets away from his man, shows there's still life in those old bones and smashes it past the Romanian Redu. That is a glorious strike. Come on. Yeah, unfortunately, Arsenal, they didn't, they didn't quite get the same Willian uh, that he was at Chelsea when he joined up in North London. Relatively similar to Petr Cech. I, th I think Petr Cech's Arsenal stint like a lot of... Oh, what a ball that is. What a touch that is. Hold on a second, guys. Rodrigo Muniz! Oh, for f what on earth is that? <laughs> Terrible. As he still searching for his first goal of the year. Petr Cech, to me, was not as bad as some people uh, think he was at Arsenal. I don't think he was that bad. He, was, you know, he wasn't great, I'll be honest here. He was nowhere near the, uh, the prime Petr Cech. He was at uh, Chelsea. But he wasn't that bad. But William just never really did it at Arsenal. Same with David Luiz, really. Let's be honest here. Um, but at Chelsea, yeah, Willian, Willian was just consistently such a great driving force on the flanks. And it's nice to know. Oh, brilliant again from Willian. Oh, yes. Hold on. God, he says Rodrigo this time. 
I trust you. I know you've just missed a sitter, but I know you're not going to miss again. It's great to know since he's come back from Brazil to Fulham, he's done really well in his third stint for a London side, man. Chelsea to Arsenal and Fulham. And his compatriot has just put us 3-1 up. Finally returning to winning ways after none in our last fight. This will be a massive three points on the South Coast, this. Oh, we've got a game in a few days' time. Unfortunately, due to the standard problems, we'll have to rotate the side for that one. But, yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind. Because getting a win in this game feels like six points picked up, man. Not just for the poor form, but because of who we're facing as well. A, uh, a side in the bottom three right now. You know that throws relegation six-pointer all too well. Oh, as Munich's always got his second goal of the game. This is definitely the definition of a relegation six-pointer where we're taking all of them. This is going to be a massive win. And it's wrapped up with a fourth. Party time in Dorset. Finally, Fulham get a win. And what a win as well. 4-1. Where, where has this performance been, man, honestly? Absolute domination in Dorset. And Fulham are leaving with three points to the game. Feel like six. A brace for Rodrigo Muniz and a demolition job. What a massive win that is. So at the halfway stage of the season, well, at the top of the table right now, the Gunners have a two-point lead over Liverpool and three clear of Aston Villa. Man City might be five behind, but, you know, we've seen this story before. We know you can never rule out a Pep Guardiola side, even from a trading position. And Manchester United in fifth, Newcastle United in sixth, and Chelsea in seventh as West Ham, Spurs and Crystal Palace are at the top ten. We're now up to 13th on the back of the win there. Six wins in 19. So, yeah, poor mini run of form, but glad to get a the win there to propel us up the table from 15th place. Only 16 goals scored all season long. I think that's a joint worst in the division right now. So, do need to improve on that. But for now, currently seeing eight clear of the Blaze in 18th place. Could, could be a lot worse, especially on the back of that poor run of form. So, yeah, could, could be a lot worse. And for those curious, Mikel Oyarzaba, the new signing at Arsenal, is the reason why they're top right now with 15 goals and 16. Harlem close behind with 14 in 18. And Salah, who scored against us in the episode opener, is third in scoring in the Premier League this season. No one in the top 25 of Fulham, so shot carry there. Uh, as for assists, Wilfred and Didi moving on from the Foxes to Everton has seven in 19 right now and is leading the way in the race to assist title. But as for the Golden Glove, it is Emmy Martinez with seven in 19. Leno is in the top six with four in 19, but we know at some point the senior German will need to be replaced. Last night out on loan right now at the Hawthorns, probably thinking sooner rather than later, Doxy boy. I mean, I say that, he's only grown two ratings out on loan at the Hawthorns right now. So long way to go, Lance. Yeah, good to have those big ambitious dreams, mate, but one foot in front of the other. Uh, as for the Champions League group stages, by the way, and the knockout draw, two in the first season, uh, you'll see who made it through in this year's uh, real-life Champions League, if you will. Uh, see if there are any interesting knockouts, interesting progressions as well. That's that uh, famed Group F, if you will, this year with PSG and Newcastle United both getting knocked out in the uh, in the group stage in third and fourth. And uh, as for the last 16, you'll see the ties on the screen for you right now. Right, well, let's do one or possibly two more games to end today's episode off with a January window about to open. Our final game of December, league leaders Arsenal in the London derby at home as we aim for back-to-back -back wins here and a huge victory against the side in pole position. Come on, Fulham. Yeah, I'll see this is my first video since the, uh, the final day was wrapped up. Um, and, you know, for, for Mikel Arteta, unfortunately, once again, finishing runners-up to Man City this year. But... I have to say, um, I, I saw a graphic of his, his current years at Arsenal, and every single season, they've had a higher points tally, and I've finished in the same position, or finished higher. So, based on the, the natural run, it seems it's only a matter of time for eventually they'll pit Man City to the championship, but fair, fair play for that with Arteta. Like, e even if you're not exactly... Oh, hang on a second. Good block there. Even if you're not constantly hitting the absolute top heights and the absolute best. As long as you're not taking steps backwards, that's the most important thing. And that's what I really rate about Arteta's tenure at Arsenal. It's just been little by little, progression by progression, season after season. You know, he came in there, he wanted to clear out, he wanted to change the club culture, he's done that. And I have to rate the man as well, because even, again, even if they haven't quite pit Man City just yet, the fact they're not taking steps backwards, that's the key. It's so, so important in, in everything. Sport, gaming, life, whatever that case may be. Even if you're not, you know, making massive strides forward, just don't go backwards, you know. Don't take steps backwards and don't regress, you know. That's what I really rate about the job Arteta's done at Arsenal so far. You know, many clubs may take steps backwards here or there, especially when trying to be great. Arsenal have not done that. 
At least not yet. Kai to Odegaard. It's only a matter of time here. Arsenal in full control here. And just struggling to defend. And oh, Leno, what a save. What a save by Bern Leno. Verts dispossessed by Polina. What have that? Yeah, well done, Jass. Well done. Well done. There we go. There we go. True. All right. Got... Hold on a second. Hold on. That's fine. Sheaf! Ben Sheaf! Ben Sheaf to not have rounds down! Oh! I always say, if you need your first goal, you've got to make it a memorable one. Screwing against a side that you came through the academy with for a massive, massive win in our first home in ages. That would have been huge. As we're now pushing for a winner! Harry Wilson! This was nice! Could have gone into the post! Oh! Squeezed a shot away from nothing! Hits the woodwork and Arsenal will clear. Great tackle, Sheaf! No, last chance. You've got to defend this. Akiyoko. Oh, jinx me. No, no, no. Oh, I don't know why I don't have fallen in. <gasps> I'll take it. Much needed clean sheet. First after nine in, I think, eight games. We'll have that. Point clean sheet at home against Arsenal. Who lead the league. Yep, I'll have that every single day of the week. Either side could have won it late there. But I'll take the point. We wanted that more than they did. Yeah, I'll have that. I'll have that. And as the January window is about to open, uh, I think we'll probably end on that as well. What we'll do beforehand is see if we're going to see Broher and Traore. Yeah, there we go. Uh, sorry, Torre, not Traore. Uh, recall. And there we go. So Broher recalled by Chelsea and Balu Torre recalled by Milan. But you know what? I don't mind. I don't mind. Even though that sees us lose two players that are first team quality, I'm fine with that. I'm not in the business of developing other teams' players right now in this pre-build season with Fulham. So totally fine with that. Totally fine with that. We'll look to bring in some, you know, permanent youngsters, if you will, in this January window. We've got plenty of cash. I won't spend it all, I promise. And I won't sign like six players, but definitely going to bring in at least one or maybe two players here for the squad to replace Broha and Torre, but also young players we can develop for the future. So, uh, free scouting updates. Let's end on this. Where from England, we'll continue scouting on these two players here. And from Wales. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I think we might have just found the next Gareth Bale. Let's just keep it calm. But um, it's only one month's worth of scouting, but I'm not going to gamble him going elsewhere. I know Southampton are sniffing around. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm not going to gamble. Oh, my word. 2.4 mil market valuation. And, uh, yeah, based on those positions... <laughs> oh, my goodness. Great. Let's just keep it calm. It's been one month, all right? And from Scotland, we'll continue scouting on these five players here. Well, I did say we could do with a, uh, a left back. That's how Bale started his career at St. Mary's. So, um... <laughs> Well, you never know. Moment of truth. Just how good is he? Well, there's John Nicole, and here is Nathan Mason. Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's uh, that's that's quite encouraging, isn't it? I want to get the uh, defensive work rate up, that's for sure. But uh, I, I, I think with Bale, instead of just, like, wasting him as a, as a, as a left-back, this, this guy is clearly an offensive monster waiting to happen. He needs to improve the pace, don't get me wrong, but... I, I want to get that defensive work rate up from low to high. With the five-star, five-star already, improve the energy, get him a little bit better on the defensive end, but also improve those shooting stats, and we've got an absolute gem right there. And again, possibly the next Gareth Bale. And this is the uh, the fullback we were looking at, Ben Morrison. It's so funny, we had Ben McKenzie in the Bournemouth Liverpool save, but... Goodness gracious, he he looks a real. Do you know what? I'm, I'm I can't even promote him yet. He's he's that good. He's only 15. I didn't even realize he's only 15. I can't even promote him if I wanted to. What a wonder kid. And we shall leave it there for today's episode, guys. So massive thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do drop a like. And much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And we'll return in the next one with more big games in the Premier League as the second half of the season is now underway. And we'll try and get away from that bottom three. We'll have the FA Cup third round to begin with in the next episode away at Anfield can't just getting through there to the last 32 and of course the January window is now open and with over 35 mil in the budget we'll look to make a couple more signings as well as we're going to fit out our small squad and get in a couple more young players in the pre-build year have a great day guys much love to you all and I'll see you for the next episode of the Premier League career mode tomorrow yeah we're back to daily uploads now thanks for your patience guys I love you and uh, I'll see you for the next episode tomorrow